Hello everyone, it's me, Sarah, and today we're going to be starting our research and prep for Camp Nanarimo. Now, I'm not actually going to be doing that much prep this year because I'm pantsing an entire novel in one week, but because it deals with things that I don't know very much about, I do want to do some basic research on the things I'm going to need to know, which will save me time come revision. That's not the plot I'm focusing on for research, it's more the setting of the novel that I want to focus on. It's going to be set in Ireland, which I don't know a lot about. It's going to be very fairy fey involved, in which I want to sort of know a little bit about, or at least know some different species of fairies and stuff in order to get all of that semi-correct as I write my first draft. I hate research. I hate it so much. Okay, so I have my to-do list of everything that I need to research. It's mostly, you know, Ireland itself, small villages, landscape, any landmarks or so that are more fey related. I need to know more about changelings or specifically the Irish version of changelings obviously because that's what I'm going to be using. Some specifically Irish fairies obviously to maybe create some more characters out of or some plot points out of or something like that and then also Irish names because if this is going to be set in Ireland and I don't doubt that people who aren't Irish will, you know, relocate to small villages in Ireland, but there's going to be a lot of, you know, long-standing traditional families there, in my head at least, for this, this village. So I'm going to need some Irish names. And that is, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be researching all of this stuff. And I'm going to put it in. This beautiful pad folio, which I have been waiting, just waiting to use. And today, I get to finally use it. Ah. Now, the first place I'm going to go to is babynames.com. Babynames.com is where I get all of my names for my characters from if I don't immediately think of them which if I want something unique or something different or something I've you know not really heard of before then you know that is the one I will go to it's got tons of names on here so if I go to advanced search and literally just put nationalities go down to Irish and search names it will give me Tons and tons of pages of Irish names. Anything pink is pink is girl, blue is boy, green is unisex. So then I can just go through these and sort of what I'm going to do is pick out names that I like the sound of. And I'm just going to write them down and then I will pick a name once I start writing for the characters as they come up. And then that way I'm not planning, I'm planning to pants. And that's, uh, that's a little bit different. The problem when you're trying to base a story in a real place is trying to figure out how real you want it to be versus what you're sort of going to make up like my plan is to set this story in an unnamed small village in Ireland right but then do I go as far as to say what county this village happens to be in and what about all of the fairy forts or fairy rings or all of the really important sites and landmarks around Ireland where fairies are commonly spotted like do I want to name one of them in the story because if I do I'm gonna have to set my village in that specific county in order for distance timeline etc etc to make sense there are some great 
myths and legends surrounding the fairies do I take from them? Like Nokani Hill, for example, in County Limerick, it has this really, really fantastic lore surrounding the goddess Ornia. And like, do I include her because she sounds amazing or do I not include her because that is extremely specific and would you require a lot more research and detail for me to pull off correctly. Or the Hill of Tara in County Meath, like, that is beautiful, fantastic, like that's the greenery I was imagining. But do I use a town or village near there in order to include that landmark or do I just make one up and plonk it nearby, you know? You know what I mean? Like... Is there a line to be drawn about how much made up stuff you can include? How realistic do you have to be if you're basing it in a realistic place? With Nephilim, it was a made up town in England, like us England, it could have been anywhere in England, it was just a made up town, they didn't go anywhere outside, there were no landmarks or anything like that for me to worry about. But there's so much detail with this and it's it's causing me wonder how much detail should I, do I want to include to make it as realistic as possible or to take ever so slight liberties to decrease the amount of research I need to do. That's what I'm trying to figure out at the moment and it's, it's difficult. Should I restrict myself to merely using Irish fairies? Or should I take a stab and use a few different ones from other cultures, English, Scottish? Maybe, maybe fairies are different like certain species of animal are different depending on the environment and the climate and the geographical location surrounding them. Maybe all fairies are the same fairy, but a fairy, say, I don't know, a water fairy, a marrow in Ireland, is, you know, the same fairy of a different culture, but like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Should I do that? I don't, there's so many questions I'm now asking myself because of this research. I didn't want to do that, but looking at different types of, um, oh gosh, looking at different um, Irish fairies, um, the same six keep popping up and just just the six as in specific species so I don't know whether I'm gonna have to make some up or whether I'm gonna have to pull from somewhere else or just use the six I have where's the line people where is the line so here is my current list of Irish names I really like that I might use I don't know which ones I'm going to use or not. Um, I have put the correct pronunciations for all of them next to them because I, I would pronounce that in my stupid English way rather than, you know, the, the Irish Celtic way because obviously they do pronounce their vowels and their words differently than we do and I'm not going to be like, yeah, that's Siofra and Laos. I know that's not right. So I have made sure so I know for a fact how to pronounce all of these names. Obviously, I know how to pronounce Caitlin Gilroy, Gregory Caitlin, but definitely for things like Lara, I would not pronounce that Lara. I would not pronounce that Kiva, if you, you see what I mean. And then Charlotte, here at the bottom, I had an idea for a really, really good name, Charlotte something. And I always remembered what it was until I came to the point where I wanted to know, remember what it was and I couldn't remember what it was. So Charlotte something was a really, really cool name. I thought I'm gonna name this character Charlotte and then something else, I can't remember what it was. It's really annoying me. So that's why Charlotte's there. But what about the fairies? Will they have traditional Irish names? Or will they have names which sound more fairy-ish? What is a fairy-ish name? Am I gonna have to go look up names which have some sort of fairy connotation and meaning to them and use those for the fairy names? So I should probably actually also set up my billet journal for April, which I've been really, really bad at doing this past year. One of my goals was to make sure that I fill out my bullet journal and use it properly. And I even changed how I did my monthlies and weeklies so it'd be easier and simpler for me to use and I've just been crap with it. I filled out in February as in I, you know, set up the monthlies and set up the weeklies and I didn't touch it. I didn't even set up March until halfway through March, 
which is really bad. So the first two weeks have not been filled in either. I've been really good with it this week though, so I've filled in and doing the work. And hopefully I will continue using it properly, especially now that the kids are not at school, because obviously with everything that's going on, all of the schools in the UK are now closed. Here I am spelling Captain Anarimo wrong. It took me ages to figure it out. So with the kids at home, all four kids at home, I've got to do my own work, look after the baby while homeschooling the eldest three. And it's just going to all be a muddle. So hopefully using my bullet journal is going to help me out a little bit. If I remember to use it, please, God, let me remember to use it. <laughs> it's a weak point and I can't seem to not make it better. So for Camp Nanarimo, Camp Nanarimo, because there's no W in the word Camp Nanarimo, I wrote in my bullet journal this month. I am planning on doing 70k in seven days. So 10k for the first seven days well, now of that April because I'm fast drafting to the extreme because apparently I like giving myself impossible challenges just to see if I can do them. So what I've done is I've set up and separated it into seven different days. I have 10 boxes per day, which I will color in per 1000 words I write every day of the week with a little box at the end to say how many words I actually wrote at the end of that day. So I want some stickers. My cat stickers are too big to go on properly because I didn't put enough space for stickers, but luckily I have actual smaller stickers, which I'm going to use instead. So we're going to go ahead and put those on in random places around just to brighten it up and just to give a bit more colour. I've been notorious for stickers lately instead of washi tape. I've got tons of washi tape. I've got tons of stickers now as well, which I really enjoy using. So do your best, some laptops and pens, and then we're colouring in and highlighting the edges just because it looks a little bit bland. It needs more colour and more pop. So let's continue and fill in all of the squares over there. And that is my setup for Camp Nanarimo for my tracker in April. It actually looks a little bit like a keyboard. So I feel like I just tap, tap, tap <laughs> as I do everything. So this is the Pinterest board here. As you can see, I started off with some imageries of Ireland, villages, greenery, moved into some fairy forts and fairy trees that I needed to get some inspiration from, moving on to some um, stone symbols. I can't remember what they're called, to be honest. I'm really sorry. Um, the protections that people use against fairies, like hagstones and bells in windows. Keeping with all of the fairy imagery, sort of turning into a bit darker here with the imagery of the hands coming out of the ground which I thought would be great for the beginning of the novel. The dark trees, the sort of floating people and then from then we moved on to more um, fairy aesthetic type I should say. The glitter, the creepiness, the you know the hands with the dog muzzle there, the toadstools um, the bones and the flowers, something that's more traditionally fairy as it's more ethereal and fantastical but still got that depth of darkness. I've got some abandoned buildings there which I thought would be great as a sort of um, difference between the real world living in the houses and the fairy world living in abandoned style houses. And then we've got a couple of character aesthetics here, I don't know who they're for but I like the design of the outfit there. And then some more creepy things which are supposed to be more um, places in the real world that signal this is a dangerous place for humans to be. So when I say I'm doing pretty basic research for Camp Nanarimo, unlike me, I'm doing pretty basic research. So yeah, that is, that's the extent of the research I'm doing. The names which I have written down here, I've also added some fairy names as well, names I'm specifically going to use for the fairy characters, whoever they, or whatever they may be, names that most of them are actually Irish. I think there's maybe some Scottish names in there as well. And kids are screaming in the background. <laughs> and they are specifically names which have some sort of meaning related to beauty. Um, because, you know, the fairies admire and appreciate beauty. And then my quick little notes here is everything that I'm going to be using for the story. So we've got what the fair Irish people call fairies, 
here and here. Here we've got what the Irish people use for protection against fairies to um, give to make the fairies happy, some areas and things in Ireland to do with fairies. Flowers! Some holidays that might be celebrated. I don't know when I'm going to set the story. Some um, lore and mythologies here that I need to read. And, you know, the names of the fairies over here that I'm going to use. So we're, so we're good. So I think it's as much research as I want to do or as I need to do. Definitely not. But it's as much as I'm going to do. So I've got something here to prepare me for when I start writing. And then obviously the aesthetics that I did. Research complete ish. I uh, I still haven't touched any plot. I still haven't touched any characters themselves. Um, I keep trying to think of it, and then I keep going, "Don't don't think about it. You're not allowed to think about it until the first of April when you start writing." So, hopefully, ideas will not come to me, and we'll see how I do in April. I'm scared. Thank you so much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Good thoughts and happy writing.